guys thank you all for watching and welcome or welcome back to sewing clara today we're gonna create together this gorgeous veg tan leather case for glasses or for sunglasses first i will show you how i created the pattern for this case and i'll give you the measurements that i have used which hold my regular size glasses and also these ray-ban wayfarer and you can always adjust the pattern to your needs and then we'll go through everything step by step i will also list all the materials and tools that i have used in the video description some of the links might be affiliate links which would mean that if you would use my links and purchase all the stuff then i would get a small portion of your purchase and before we jump right into it i have a channel recommendation because that's the channel i'm learning with working with leather because i'm fairly new to this it's Cortair Leather. They have amazing videos, many creative ideas, but also many videos that are useful to beginners such as myself. So I will link their channel down below and also here in the right corner. And now let's jump right into this. Let's start with the pattern. I made a rectangle for my personal needs, 15.5 centimeters wide, that's 6.1 inches, and 16 centimeters high, 6.3 inches. I made the top section on one half 1.5 centimeters lower, that'd be half an inch, and I made the line a little bit curved. Optionally, you could also make the sides towards the bottom slightly tapered, since the finished product will round up a bit and it can make a nicer shape. First, I protected my table with a piece of thick cardboard. Ideally, you would use cutting board since it offers more protection. I placed my leather piece on the cardboard and I positioned my pattern. I taped the pattern to the leather to secure it in place. I had two cutting tools to choose from. I have used the one with detachable blade because it doesn't bend so much, which made cutting for me personally easier. I traced out the outlines of the pattern and I have used the ruler for the straight lines. I never pushed too hard on the knife. I rather went multiple times over each line to slowly cut through. I tapered the sides towards the bottom by about 3 mm. Next I made a mark with my cutting tool for where I wanted to thin out the edges. I also cut back all corners at an angle because I wanted to round them up later. I went in with my skiving knife and I have slowly shaved down the edges bit by bit. I find that that way I get more even results and I don't accidentally go too deep in. This is probably not the most professional technique, but it works for me personally the best. While doing all this, I did not use force, just friction to keep the edges well shaped. And then I beveled the edges. I don't know for sure what size my beveler was. It came with the leather crafting set I bought and the size was not listed. I will link the set down below though. I made a groove for the stitching line with adjustable edge groover. I went in about 3 mm from the edge. As a next step, I started filing the top edge only with a file to round the edge up. The grid of the file was about 400. 
it might be too harsh for some letters, but I found that this worked on the letter I had the best, since the letter was quite grainy and dry. I filed the edge till it was not lumpy anymore. And then I applied a small amount of saddle soap on the edges. You could use gum track or tap water. I had saddle soap at home, so I keep using it. I went over the edges with 600 grit sandpaper to further smooth them down. And then I changed to 1200 grit to get even finer result. Whenever I felt like I found a little lump, I would go over with the file again, then with the 600 grit sandpaper and then with the finest sandpaper. Then I grabbed my chisels so I could punch holes into the groove for the stitching on the top edge. I used the widest chisel for the straight line and smaller sizes for the rounded line. I always dip my chisel into homemade paw balm for my husky, which helps the chisel to go through smoothly and it makes it easier to pull out. Beeswax is normally the thing to use, but I find that the paw balm works great. Tutorial for this paw balm is linked in the video description. Once I had the holes for the top edge, it looked like this. I decided I wanted to embellish the case with a burning tool. I had a symbol I wanted to carve in on a piece of paper. I positioned the paper where I wanted the symbol to be and traced out the lines with a ballpoint pen. That made a mark on the letter. Then I took the burning tool and I put on a tip that resembled ballpoint pen. It works similar to drawing, only the tip needs to move very slowly so it can burn the lines evenly. The drawing on the bottom is a variation of a symbol my husband created for himself. And I also decided to make some kind of vines with leaves along the top edge.
and here is what it looked like. Then I used Feebing's letter dye in the shade Kelly Green. I applied it with a piece of cloth. It won't dye the letter evenly, but it will give it rather a kind of an antique look, like smudgy. For an even look, you can dip dye the letter or use airbrush bottle. I personally love the smudgy look, plus I'm too lazy. I dyed both the right and the wrong side of the letter. And I dyed the edges too. When I was done with dyeing, I took Feebing's Antique Gel in the shade Brown and applied it on the surface of the letter for an additional effect. I wiped it off immediately and I have used it the same way on the edges too. After that was done, I folded the case in half and I molded it into the desired shape. And then I let it dry overnight. Next day, I wiped the excess letter dye off, which I forgot to film. And then I grabbed a red waxed sewing yarn and I stitched around the top edge with saddle stitch. That is basically a running stitch made with two needles. I made sure that each stitch had the same tension. I also made sure that the right needle would always go under the left yarn and that way the stitches kept the same pattern. Once I reached an end, I made a few stitches back, I clipped the yarn and I singed the excess with a lighter. And then it looked like this. Next, it was time to glue, so I took Feebing's letter cement and I applied it on the edges. I did not go all the way up on the front side where I had the lowered curved line. I waited until the glue was dry to touch and then I aligned the edges. I pushed the edges together to make them stick and I hammered a bit over the edges too to get even a better result. And then it was time to burnish the remaining edges. I did it the same way I worked at the top edge. First, I filed all down with 400 grit sandpaper to smoothen out all lumps. Then I went in with 600 grit sandpaper and then 1200 grit sandpaper.
once I was happy with the result, I went back in with the antique gel to darken the edges. I worked the antique gel in and then I wiped the excess off. And then I applied edge coat on all edges. I let it dry and then I went over the edges with a cloth. And finally I used a wooden slicker to finish. Again I used very little pressure, I let the friction do the job. Now that my edges were all smooth and shiny, I could punch in holes for the remaining stitching lines. I used again different sizes of chisels according to the shape of the edges. I kept dipping the chisels into the husky pole balm to make my work easier. Then I took again the red waxed yarn and I started stitching from the top down. When I ran out of yarn, I went back a few stitches like I did at the end of the top stitching line. Then I simply went in where the stitching ended and continued my way to the very end. Once I reached the end, I did a sew up, which means a few stitches back, and then I clipped off the yarn and cinched again the ends of the yarn. I hammered the stitches down to close the holes and to flatten the stitch line. I took a cloth, dipped it into the pole down and I have polished the case. This removed any leftover excess leather dye too. Now the case softened a bit and I used the end of the lighter and shaped the bottom a bit. I basically stretched it out ever so slightly to make the shape a bit rounded, to bulge it out a little bit. 
as a last step, I went in with a leather balm and I have polished the case again till it was all smooth and shiny. And then the case for glasses or sunglasses was finished. Now here is what it looked like. This size is for me personally perfect because it fits in both my reading glasses and my sunglasses, which are by the way Ray-Ban Wayfarer. You can always adjust the pattern to your needs. Make it less wide or wider or higher or a little bit shorter, but you can always go in and use the measurements that I have used as a base and adjust them to your needs. Alrighty, so we are all done. The case is finished and this one will go to my husband and I will make myself definitely a few more in future because I have pretty much in every single purse reading glasses. Sadly, I can't exist without them anymore. And now a few words about the embellishment. So obviously like with anything creative, you don't have to embellish the piece at all. You don't even have to dye it. You can just leave the wedge and letter as it is, stitch it together, apply some letter balm, edge coat, and you're good to go. It's gonna be very beautiful. If you like embellishment, there are several possibilities. One, you can carve something on the surface with a swivel knife, which I don't have yet. Or you can use the tool that I have shown today, the wood slash letter burning tool, which is a great piece. It comes with several tips that are either shaped like little knives or they are pointy, some are a little rounded, so you will have either sharper or a little bit thicker lines. Some are even shaped like certain patterns, so you can have a lot of fun with that. Or if you don't want to invest in a tool like that, and if you buy a set of letterworking tools that comes with letter stamps, which is something I did, you can have a lot of fun with letter stamps instead. So. This is what letter stamps look like. So it's pieces of metal and there is a stamp at the end and the stamps have different shapes, different sizes, and they can be used for different things. Like some of them can be used for the background. Some of them are rather in order to create a pattern. And I used these for the first case that I created and this is what came out. So I have here this leafy flowery pattern around the edges and my initials. And for that, I have used these three stamps that came with my set of letter working tools. So one is shaped like this little flower. Then we have here this one that looks like leaves and this little circle, which I have used for my initials. Definitely great thing, but you have to make sure that the letter is really soaked. So I made it really wet. I actually soaked it in water a little bit and then I wiped it and then I would hammer with the stamps on the places where I wanted to have the pattern and I would make sure that the stamps would go pretty deep so that the pattern would be showing. Definitely a great option. But again, we are talking here about creative work, so there are no right and wrongs. At the end of the day, it's about whatever makes you happy. But that's gonna be it for today. I'm so excited about learning this new skill. There will be definitely more pieces we'll create together in future. But for today, I'm gonna say goodbye. Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate you guys very much. And I'm looking forward to seeing you with my next creative project. <music>